Hey everyone, my name is Holly and welcome to the royalty. Welcome into what is most definitely the final part of my career. I found out there is a final door and I have two save files. Going through the door with two keys, going through the door with three keys. And we're going to try two keys first. Let's see what happens. How many times does this make now? Never thought his presence would make such a huge difference. Seems like his use is nearing its end. No need to keep him around. Man. Wonder how long it'll take until I find another one. Hmm. Letting it end like this would be quite boring though. And he did interact with her quite a lot. Maybe I should do one last experiment. Send him off for the bank. He deserves it for helping me so much. Alright, time to go make preparations. What, what was, my head felt like it was splitting open. What was I doing? I'd seen something, a nightmare. No, it'd been real, hadn't it? Pain was nearly unbearable. Images seemed to have no relation to each other. Flash, but in my mind, a plant, a dark room full of people, distorted faces, an ocean, two children, a blood trail, a pack of cats, a knife, pain. My head felt as if it was about to burst and then it was over. Pain was gone. I steadied myself. The images I had seen, were they hallucinations? Were they memories? My mind was all jumbled up. I called out as I left the bedroom, but no one answered. I approached the front door. My hand touched the cold doorknob. Sweat started to fall on my arm. Was I afraid? Of what? I swallowed hard. My hand finally moved. I turned the doorknob. I stepped outside. I noticed that everything looked normal. My breathing slowed. I hadn't noticed how tense my body had become. I stepped into the narrow alleyway that seemed to be leading into a busier part of the town. It was bustling with life. Something about the people walking by was off, but it was hard to put a finger on it. It was too far away. I decided to avoid the main street for now and instead went on the other direction. My instincts told me it was the right thing to do. Right as I turned into another alleyway, I saw something in the corner of my eye. Someone just entered one of these buildings. I hadn't turned my head quick enough. A brilliantly white structure seemed out of place amid the grey houses that were lining the streets. As I trotted closer, I noticed it looked awfully familiar to the lab I'd worked in. No, it was the lab. What was it doing here? I stood in front of it for a while and found it, but there was no mistaking it was my lab. The easiest way to make sure was to enter it. The interior looked exactly like I remembered it. No one was at the reception, meaning no one had to manually open the door. But I fortunately still knew the passcode. I made my way upstairs and towards section M. On the way, I tried to keep my eyes and ears peeled in case one of my colleagues was around. The place seemed to be totally deserted. It wasn't the only thing that was bothering me, though. Everything was oddly clean. Most people would likely not think that this was something to be concerned about. The problem was there was no way someone had been able to find the time to tidy up the lab. Not only had we lost a big part of our staff, no one was in the right mood to bother with keeping things clean. I was contemplating what this might mean, I finally reached my destination, my office. The door was slightly ajar, did someone break in? I cautiously opened it. The room was empty. My file was gone. My file cabinets were gone. Even the wallpaper was gone. What happened here? The only thing present was a single sheet of paper in the middle of the room. I hesitantly walked towards it. The door behind me suddenly slammed shut and I jerked around. Was it the wind or did someone slam it shut? There was no door. I stood there in disbelief. And I slowly looked, turned around and looked at the piece of paper on the floor. Hands began to shake. The closer I got to the piece of paper, the worse the trembling became. I hesitantly let my eyes wander over the red writing. Thank you for participating in my experiments. Is that May? No, that's May. Who this? Is this May's sister? We have all keys. We have all keys. I don't know what the difference will be.
What? My head felt like it was splitting open. What was I doing? I'd seen something, a nightmare. No, it'd been real, hadn't it? The pain was nearly unbearable. Images that seemed to have no relation to each other flashed through my mind. A plant, dark room full of people, distorted faces, an ocean, two children, a blood trail, a pack of cats, a knife, pain. My head felt like it was about to burst open and then it was over. Pain was gone, steady myself. The images I had seen, were they hallucinations or were they memories? My mind was all jumbled up. Called out as I left the bedroom, but no one answered. Approached the front door, my hand touched the cold doorknob. Sweat started to form on my arm. Was I afraid? Of what? Swallowed hard. My hand finally moved and I turned the doorknob. I stepped outside and noticed that everything looked normal. My breathing slowed. I hadn't noticed how tense my body had become. I stepped into a narrow alleyway that seemed to be leading to a busier part of town. Bustling with life. Something about the people walking by was off, but it was hard to put a finger on it. I was too far away. I decided to avoid the main street for now and instead went the other direction. My instincts told me it was the right thing to do. Right as I turned into another alleyway, I saw something in the corner of my eye. Someone just entered one of the buildings. I hadn't turned my head quick enough. Brilliantly white structure seemed out of place amid the grey houses that were lining the streets. As I trotted closer, I noticed that it looked awfully familiar to the lab I worked in. No, it was the lab. What's it doing here? I stood in front of it for a while and found it, but there was no mistaking it. This was my lab. The easiest way to make sure was to enter it. The interior looked exactly as I remembered it. No one was at the reception, meaning no one had to manually open the door. Fortunately, still knew the passcode. I made my way upstairs and walked towards section M. On the way, I tried to keep my eyes and ears peeled in case one of my colleagues was around. They seemed to be totally deserted. It wasn't the only thing that was bothering me, though. Everything was oddly clean. Most people would likely not think this was something to be concerned about. Almost there was no way they'd been able to find a way time to clean up the lab. Not only had we lost a big part of our staff, but no one was in the right mood to bother with keeping these things clean. So I was contemplating what this might mean, I finally reached the destination, my office. The door was slightly ajar, did someone break in? Cautiously opened it. The room was empty, my desk was gone, my file cabinets were gone, even the wallpaper was gone. What had happened here? The only thing present was a single sheet of paper in the middle of the room. I hesitantly walked towards it. The door behind me suddenly slammed shut and I jerked it around. Was it the wind or did someone slam it shut? There was no door. I stood there in disbelief, then I slowly turned around and looked at the back of the sheet of paper on the floor. My hands began to shake the closer I came to the piece of paper, the worse the trembling came. I suddenly let my eyes wander over the red writing. Okay, even with all three keys? What are the keys for? I'm dead. I'm so dead. But I have the keys. Something fishy here. I'm gonna figure out how to use these keys. <clears throat> I don't care how long it takes. Y'all will only see it be solved, obviously. Congratulations on finishing my queries there. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the experience. Before you are sent to the title screen, there are a few things you should know. One. On the title menu the screen, you'll notice a new menu called Extra. Within it, you'll find post-game content and additional information about the game's story. You'll also have the option to replay the intro and outro and view achievements. We have done our best to make more my careers as bug free as possible and enjoyable as possible. We might still encounter some bugs or have suggestions on how to improve the game. If you do, please don't hesitate to fill out our feedback form. That's adorable. Soundtrack for free on Bandcamp. Adorable. Ah, oh, Twitter, adorable. That's cool. So, does the extras have to do with the keys? It was quiet, but I seemed to be safe. A nightmare. Seems like I just had a nightmare. Couldn't remember anymore, but I must have been horrifying. Chills were still running down my spine. Just a dream. Just a nightmare, nothing more. Calming down, I decided to take another look around the house. The fact that no one was here, even though the lights were on, was still nagging at the back of my mind. I was more confident that I'd be able to help now that it was daytime. I left the bedroom to retry the doors just in case. When I, no when I passed the front door, I noticed a sheet of paper that was taped to it. Handwriting was very crude and I was able to make out what it said. No escape. Had someone been here while I was asleep? What did they mean, no escape? I took it on the door. It didn't budge. I took it again and again, each time with increasing force. It didn't move an inch. Was I trapped in here? 
Quickly moved to the nearest window and tried to open it, but I couldn't. Just like the door, the window too was, didn't budge as if it was painted on the wall. Same is true for all of the windows. In my desperation, I picked up a chair and threw it at the glass, but nothing happened. It didn't even cause a visible scratch. This was madness. Had someone locked me in on purpose? How could I escape? I quickly went from door to door and tried to open them, and to my surprise, one opened. Did I not check every door properly yesterday? Or did the one person who was here before I woke up open it? The room looked like a study, a very small and empty study. The only notable objects were a desk and a computer. The desk had four drawers. Peeking at someone's private possession didn't see well with me. So it wasn't time to think about it, I needed to find a way to escape. I took down one of the drawers. Closed. Keyholes on the front of the doors. Took another look below the desk and behind the computer, but there was nothing of note. That also meant there was no phone here I could use to call for help. But if this computer was connected to the internet, I might be able to contact a colleague or friend. I put my hands into my pockets out of habit, I felt something metallic brush my hands. My pockets had been completely empty the day before. I pulled out what was inside and I realised I was holding several small keys I didn't recognise. My puzzled look wandered towards the drawers. What should I examine? Let's start with the computer. I switched the computer on and was greeted by a, to a simplistic interface. Welcome, Maria. Who's Maria? Every door has one key. The first door is the easiest, the third door is the hardest. For the third door, the order is important. When viewing the next page, you're still... Oh! Okay, yeah, I did both of those. That's cute! That's really cute. I like that. It helps you. It actually helps you. I slid the key in and it fit. I actually somehow had this drawer's key. Inside the drawer was an unassuming USB device. I fit one to the computer's USB devices. Switched the computer and was greeted to a simplistic interface. Well, I just put a USB in, so like, what's, what's going on with the USB? But I like that it does give you help to find the keys. Lots of people struggle with that. Our department was tasked with finding a cure for the recent outbreak and I was appointed co-team lead to help with our insane workload. Since my partner will cover the logistical side of things, I can focus on research experimentation and choosing what to share with other departments. Firstly, I'd like to summarise the subject. A new type of disease was discovered at excavation site 1208ZZZ2, simply named the same disease, or ZOS for short. Cause unknown. Team D is currently stationed on site for security and sample collection. The rest of us work in labs. Zoz has no symptoms at first, but eventually causes lightheadedness, which is strange, and it keeps blood flowing to the head. Suddenly victims fall into a coma, their bodies decay, and their neck regions harden, presumably to prevent blood loss, and their brain mostly stays intact. Due to the disease's mysterious nature and transmissibility, we are forced to leave the quarantine zone. Those of us working on the cure, hence, are especially at high risk. The chance of contamination is high. Thanks to Team D, we now know that spore-like microorganisms are the most likely cause of SARS, compared to prior theory about aerial um, transmission. Furthermore, we discovered that the heads from the excavation site are emitting more of them. I don't know how many of us are infected, but recent victims of SARS should start exhibiting its sim few symptoms any day now. Further testing is needed to learn how these microorganisms affect our bodies in such gruesome ways. If we can do that, we can find ways to fight back against ZARS. Ugh, this entire situation is giving me a headache. With all the information gathered by Team D, we were able to draft a rough plan for the cure's development. I'm hopeful that we can make it quickly before ZARS spreads beyond the local populace. Each team has set up sleeping quarters in and around the labs so that everyone can... What did I do wrong? Okay, I messed up somewhere. Sorry, apologies. <sighs> Back to page eight. <laughs> Each team has set up sleeping quarters in and around the lab so everyone can spend as much time working as possible. Some of us have gotten as little as one hour sleep in these past few nights. Hopefully our sacrifices will be worth it. One variant of the cure is making steadily progress. Otherwise, things have been generally slow. I fear the longer it takes, the more morale will fall, especially as people within the quarantine zone fall victim to us. 
A colleague of mine has broken down when he heard that Zaza travelled further than expected. His family lived in one of the newly affected quarantine zones. Team Z also had a problem with one of the scientists who got themselves banned from the research centre. Apparently she performed non-consensual experiments on people infected with Zaz. Due to the dire situation we're in, some might try to want to try extreme methods. But I agree that she went too far. Hopefully nothing similar happens here. But now I think I need to lie down. One of our facility's branches created a reliable means of telling whether someone has Zaz before they fall into a coma. I've been given a prototype of the test and was curious enough to try it myself. Unfortunately, it came up positive. I should have known, since I've been handling this force daily. Not even following every possible precaution helped. How am I supposed to finish my research now? I'll just have to do it as quickly as possible. No one can know. This can't all be for nothing. The cure my team has been working on is almost complete. If I can, I'm going to try it on myself first, since it should wipe out any of the Zoll's spores within an infected person. It's my only hope. At least this way, if something happens, no one else has to suffer from our short-sightedness. I know I don't have much time left, so I've been working on it non-stop. I don't want to try it on someone else without knowing with 100% certainty that it works. If it does, it shouldn't affect an infected people. We'll distribute it to everyone. So, it's better to be safe than sorry. I don't want to think about what will happen to me if it's ineffective. Writing these logs is getting harder. Darkness sometimes creeps in on the edges of my vision. It's difficult to stand and I feel like I'm moving through water. If this ends up being my last entry, then goodbye, everyone. And good luck. I didn't mean to turn the computer off. I've got more logs to read. <laughs> Windows. <laughs> That's funny. I recently encountered an interesting species of plant, one I hadn't seen before. It had a rather large stem, which was dotted with countless tiny mushrooms. Botany is my specialty, so I took it to an old colleague of mine who knows the field. Couldn't make any sense of it either. One thing I quickly observed is that animals, mainly mammals like cats and dogs, seem to be highly attracted to the plant. Most eat them. Some even refuse to eat anything but. My botanist colleague and I decided to keep looking into these plants and the animals who eat them, at least until we solved this memory. Mystery. Eventually I was able to observe a drastic change in the animals that ate the plant. The bodies deformed over time as they fed and they became incredibly aggressive. Looking at them all seemed to develop human or human-like features. Feared I might be attacked at some point, so I locked all of my test subjects in cages. They only ate the damned plants. I had to keep feeding them an all-plant diet and it still disturbs me. They all started to look even more human. They even became far, far more dangerous. My ex-dog sniffed at a cloth behind my butt and his colleague left behind and became highly agitated. It broke out of his cage and reached outside to God knows where. I chased after it, of course, but it was already long gone. Needless to say, I reinforced the cages the other animals were being held in. Today is the day. After the, that incident, I just received word that my colleague was found dead in his home with a big blood puddle underneath. A DNA test revealed that it wasn't his. The person who found him swore that a weird monster was lying right where the puddle was, but slowly dissolved. Obviously, no one believed her. My working hypothesis at this time is simple. These monsters can be used to seek out and kill someone, but they die immediately afterwards. While I mourn the loss of my colleague and friend, I need to continue our research. I have a feeling that other people have found out what the plants can be used for. They must be developing their own pets in secret. It won't go so smoothly. I'll have to keep growing my own in the hopes that they're better and faster than they are. I should be okay as long as I avoid leaving anything of mine in someone's home. Ah, this is Frederick's. It's just too bad those things die after only one use. So Frederick wanted to make it like perma, perma kill. So I guess we're finding the notes of all the people that are involved. Yep. Go. Cool. I've got a lot of um, a lot of achievements here. Um, draw two. Slid the key in and it fit. I actually somehow had this drawer's key. Inside the drawer was an unassuming USB. I put it into one of the computer's USBs the slot. Computer. Computer. The news talked about a new epidemic that's broken out. I refuse to give any info other than the disease sends you into a coma-like state. 
They told us to stay in our homes. There's talk of a contamination zone or a quarantine too. One of the neighbours said they'll stop you from leaving the area, even by force if necessary. My sister, who is assigned to a team researching the sickness, also told me she'll be away from home until the situation is solved. I feel so alone and helpless. This has been going on for way longer than I expected. My sister still hasn't come home since she left. I know she has to work every day and night to help everyone, but I can't just help missing her. It's been so much since we left home. I heard that some of my neighbours have the disease too. I really hope they find a cure. I've had it, started having weird dreams lately. I always find myself in a town that I haven't seen before. My neighbours are all there, but perfectly healthy. That's pretty normal on its own, but it's the exact same town every time. I feel like I'm waking up, walking these streets and seeing the sights there. Things are always lucid to an extent. Time just progresses in a strange way. Like hours pass in a couple of minutes and I don't even notice. I must have been having these dreams because of all the stress. My sister suddenly came home. I was really happy at first, but she seemed different. When I asked what was bothering her, she said she got fired and wouldn't tell me why. I just let it go. I told her about my weird te- dreams too, but she barely listened. Maybe I can do something to cheer her up. Yo, her sister is... Okay, sister's Maria. May, like, that's why she came home. My sister left yesterday, but didn't tell me where she was going. She came back with this weird device, which she said is for telling whether someone else saws. That was apparently the name to give the sickness. I let her use it on me. Apparently I got infected somehow. I figured that was probably the case. Most of our neighbours are in comas, and I saw some of the ones who aren't just yesterday. I guess it couldn't be helped. She asked if I'd let her inspect me. I was hesitant, but she talked me into it. My sister told me something weird today. Apparently I should already be in a coma, but I don't feel any different than usual. This led her to think that maybe somehow my body can fight the disease. She told me to stay put and not tell anyone until she was absolutely sure. That's why I couldn't go to the research facility and let them have a look. She got really defensive. She said they may hurt me. I let her test her theories for two more days. After that, I'll see if someone else can find anything. I don't know what happened to my sister. We've always been close. She's my best friend. She isn't the same person anymore. I tried to leave today because her two days are up, but she protested. Things got physical and she overpowered me. She locked me in my room and screamed, it's off your own good and they'll kill you. I wish I was strong enough to break free. She calmed down she told me there's something in our, bo- in our bodies preventing the sickness from developing. She even said that she infected herself to test the theory. It made me cry first because I thought she was insane. But I was glad she was okay. I had another weird dream today. I was in that town again, but I met my sister there. We talked and she said she'd been having the same dream ever since she was infected herself. As soon as we were up, she stormed into my room and started asking questions. She said it might be because of Zars, but that doesn't make any sense. She wanted this to end so things come back to normal. Since yesterday, I've been hearing weird noises outside my room every now and then. My sister keeps saying that everything's fine and that I'm just imagining things, but I'm scared. Sometimes it's just random shuffling, but sometimes it sounds like muffled screams. What are you doing out there, Mary? Um, I don't think you want to know. I don't think she wants to know. I know what her sister's up to. I don't think she wants to know what her sister's up to. I'm dead. Yup. There are generally three methods to reach the pinnacle of face comedy. Distortion, removal, and addition. We'll start with the easiest one, distortion. Distortion is a simple but not so well refined technique. I wouldn't recommend trying it for too long. Still, good fundamentals to provide a base for improvement, meaning you, my dear reader, should keep paying attention. The easiest way to distort one's facial features is with the fingers. For example, you could pull up your eyelid or tug the corners of your mouth, giving you a strange appearance. Any amateur can do that, though. Using tools is far more complex. Not to mention more permanent. Everyone will love it, especially if you shift the tool places around. Personally, I'd recommend using staples or tape to make distortions more long term. Other interesting tools are strings and pins. Put a pin through an eyelid or cheek to fix it in place and then rest of the page is covered in red stains. Now let's discuss removal. This is an intricate, highly involved process. You can completely excise parts of your face to look funnier and maybe even charm your crush. To do this, you'll need scissors, a big sharp knife, hand saw or bone saw and a rotary saw. Caution, messy. It's usually best to have an assistant too. Removal is a difficult process by oneself and maybe your body needs help as well. Just remember that laughter is the best medicine. The last you receive from this, the essence of true facial comedy will make the pain more than bearable. First, make a small incision on the left side of your nose, and the rest of the description is drenched in blood. Finally, will it arrive at addition? Like removal, this is a very risky technique reserved only for the cream of the crop. It might sound simple though, all you have to do is add, 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 and never stop. Search for features that are a disgrace to facial humour, and then take them for yourself and pair them off. The person may even thank you for your help with the removal. 
There's some important things to keep in mind, though. First and foremost, though, never steal from another uh, from a fellow comedian. Second, don't damage anyone's face while on the hunt for part because you might ruin your additions. Third, be sure to keep unused parts frozen so they can be used later. You may want to start with just one person, but variety is the spice of life. You can add all sorts of facial features to yourself and look like either a real freak show or a die fit model. Beauty is only skin. The remaining pages are covered in bloody blood and assorted fleshy chunks, leaving them completely unreadable. Okay. This is good. Inside the drawer was an unassuming USB. <sighs> I'm worried about what's in drawer four. Me? Am I in drawer four? Maybe. <laughs> yep. They actually fired me. Me? How could they be so short sighted? Need to use every possible method in combating Zoz. If I was the leader of this operation, I'd fire anyone who let ethics get in the way. Sacrifices always need to make. This was. Mer yeah, we know. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just consider continue my research in private. Since it's not like there aren't enough subjects inside the zone. Frankly, I can't believe I originally thought I was lucky enough to, unlucky enough to live here when it happened. It's a stroke of luck. First, I need to get my notes back. Those numbskulls wouldn't let me take them when they threw me out. I'm whined about how they company property. It's my IP. I did the labour, I know my contract, and I know they don't have a leg to stand on. They just want to claim they found the cure, but it'll be me. At least security isn't too tight at the moment. Massive steps towards discovering a cure. My sister has SARS, and although I don't know when she was infected, she says she feels fine. This means the chance of natural immunity, or at least natural resistance, is greater than zero. I'll have to take drastic measures and see if this resistance is genetic. Normally I'd exercise caution, but time is running out. No one deserves the honours but me. My hypothesis was proven true after a few successful tests. Keep doing that. <laughs> and self-infection. It seems my sister and I are both completely immune to the disease. I'll immediately start development on a cure. May suggested giving herself up to my colleagues and I convinced her to stay. They have a bigger team, so I'd have no chance to catch up if they found out about her. She gave me two days. I have to find a way to keep her after that. It's not just for our sake, for everyone's. I've been having odd dreams of, as of late. I always wake up in the same town, and then I find myself wandering through it for hours on end. Sometimes I see people sitting along the road, all who look identical to my test subjects. I've even met someone who looked like my infected neighbours, but they always insist that they've been living there all their life. I'd even recount events from their childhood to prove it. Strangely, I met May there too. She was shocked to see me, but the feeling wasn't exactly mutual. She mentioned something about having strange dreams the other night. I guess this is just one of the disease symptoms. Could Zoz be related to collective unconscious of some kind? Even if it's only shared among a few people, do we really need to get rid of it if so? We could have eternal life in that alternate world. No, I'm too committed to stop now. The things I've done that I'll have to do are too much to allow that. I'm even running out of Zoz infected. Maybe I just need some uninfected subjects. Last night I broke into the lab against the other researchers going to collaborate with them. There's only so much I can do at home. Most people were asleep with some weren't. Just when I thought I'd be found out, they just walked past me with blank expressions on their face. Things must not be progressing too smoothly for them. Maybe the numbskulls in charge are forced to crunch. Whatever it is, it can't be good for them. I'm glad to see it. It means I'm ahead of them and that I can help them by perfecting my cure. About to leave with my borrowed data, and I found a scientist just outside the facility. He's unconscious, so I brought him home. So he found out he was already infected, so at least I didn't have to do the out part myself. I just finished designing a new formula for my cure. This lucky guy could be the first guy to try it. So I was exploring the other side, I realised that I could, very slightly, change the environment and even the people around me. Does my resistance have something to do with it? Is it some kind of blessing or great curse? I also noticed something truly peculiar about my last t test subject. He met my sister in the dream didn't have any fake memories unlike everyone else he seemed to be lost and was trying to find his way back home maybe it's because of the new formula i injected him with it might not have been enough to cure him but he seems to have the same awareness of the place that me and i do minus the power to actually wake up also seemed as if his present is impacting the world and the people around him similar to me and me but more extremely 
That was a great stroke of luck on my part. I think I'll try testing how far I can walk that place further, and you'll make an excellent control group. But I wonder what happens to people in the real world when the Zars dream self dies. Last month, a team led by renowned archaeologist Herschel Sawyer set out to examine the recent landslide's path and origin. They discovered artefacts this past Monday. Today, learned that they belong to an underground village near Pengimbara. How or why it was buried remains unclear, but it's certain the discovery will shed considerable light on our local history. Dr Sawyer asked our paper not to disclose the dig site current location so that he and his team can work without distraction. When questions about why no one came forward regarding the artefacts, one archaeologist said, we just didn't know what we were dealing with. It'd be premature. Here's hoping that more interesting things get unearthed in the coming days. It's a follow-up to yesterday's front stage story. Herschel Sawyer's archaeology team has discovered several human heads in the ground. The strange part, explained Dr Sawyer, is that buried heads have a level of deterioration that implies they're much younger than the village. When asked if they may be recent, he said the possibility was a strong one. The team has sent some of their findings to laboratories and police for analysis. At the very least, this might explain what happened to these people or how they ended up in such an abandoned underground place, Dr. Sawyer commented. The newly christened Buried Hamlet archaeology team has made major progress today. This afternoon, Herschel Sawyer identified the village as more of a hamlet, as people relied on farming to survive. There are no bigger historical villages near it or Pem- Pengimbara. So the residents were secluded. However, there may be more buried nearby, Dr. Sawyer explained. Before investigating the surrounding areas, the team will focus on fully uncovering the hamlet and its secrets. Unfortunately, suddenly his headedness and certain members have slowed the progress. When asked to provide more information on the heads of his team, uncovered on Saturday, Dr. Sawyer informed of that he's still awaiting results from police and laboratories. The buried hamlet archaeological team, led by Herschel Sawyer, can connect themselves to another strange occurrence, Disembodied buried heads they uncovered on Saturday were found to be more recent than expected. Coroner's report noted that blood circulation never stopped for a moment, even though specific parts of the brain had died. What we have here are essentially people in a perpetual coma, according to her. This borders on witchcraft, a scientist remarked. We still have no idea how it happened. Our assumption is that the heads have been preserved by an unknown parasite or other organism. Police, meanwhile, said that the heads don't match any missing person reports for the last three years. We can't publish this. The coroner is claiming that the news might tarnish their reputation. And we hurt has for how absurd it is. If this is all you have today, then remove the comment or claim it was anonymous. Okay. And I guess we'll open the fourth drawer if we can. We opened all the others, surely. About to open the drawer when I realised there was no handle. Checking side and underside, I didn't uncover any hidden switches or keyholes. There was no way to open it without breaking it down bit by bit, which would take forever without proper tools. But this drawer may contain a way for me to escape, as for a house key, for example. I decided to work on dismantling the drawer while I wasn't investigating the rest of the room. You can't open the fir- fourth drawer in this version of the game. Thank you for your patience. Nothing here that could help me at the moment. Maybe I should lie down and take a nap. Someone would find me eventually. Right? There's no way I'd be stuck here forever, right? Okay, so if I watch the ending again, like, does anything change? I know everything now. Wait, 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 wait. I went a bit too fast. But quite clearly I was just a test subject because of this disease that was going around. And if I miss the ending by being too fast on the skip button again, I'm not going to be happy. Let's see. Yeah, no, I'm still dead. I'm still dead. I'm very much dead. Yeah. 
nothing I can do. We've got all the facts. We know what's gone on. We know why we're dead. I think that was a very interesting story. I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I hate Maria. Me and Maria aren't homies. But like, you know, there you go. I got most of the achievement. I didn't get good boy. Don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, the code to enter the penguin grotto mode. Starving companions. You're a fun guy. Oh, I don't think I want any of those. Nope. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Unless we can go to the main menu and there's somewhere we can put in a code. Yeah, I think draw four might be where that achievement comes from, but it's definitely nothing that we can do extra. So that was super cool. I have a lot of fun with that game. Um, really interesting, really heartbreaking at times, and made me think about different ways to move around. But in the end, we're dead. We were just a test subject. We didn't mean anything, so whoops. <laughs> But if you like this video and you like this series, please do consider dropping a like, subscribing, turning on the notification bell, and leaving a comment if you've got something to say about the story. The story was super, super heavy, so you probably have some thoughts on it. Give me your thoughts. Anyway, I'm proud of you for getting through today. Even more proud of you for getting through tomorrow. Advidasen, leave dirty, go to shudders, alawego. Peace. See you on the next one. Bye! I'd like to say a huge thank you to my royal patrons. My tier 3 supporter, Hansel Panda, my tier 2 patron supporter, Suki SJ, and my tier 1 patron supporter, Danny. Your support allows me to make content as regularly as I do, and I am so grateful. If you would like to join the Royal Patrons, there is a link down below in the description. Thank you so much for everything you do for me.